Hi, everybody. So today I'm working on taking some of the tools that are inside of Beaker, such as the Files Explorer over here in the editor, and moving them into user land. And when we say user land, what we're referring to is making them run like any other kind of application so that they're not privileged, just built in. And we think this is important so that, you know, whenever people um, want to make something to replace our built-in Files Explorer and editor, uh, they can. Or if they have entirely new ideas, they can go ahead and put those in. And uh, so the first thing that we need to do before we get into that is um, figure out um, if we can make the applications as they currently exist um, run just um, outside of the built-in environment. Because they're able to cheat a little bit because Beaker serves them and so they can do things that are special. Um, and so what I figured I'd do is uh, use this as an opportunity to demonstrate some of the tooling around um, creating applications in Beaker, um, since some of these uh, things that I'm going to do might be useful to um, one of you. So uh, I'm working on the Files Explorer right now. I've already made some progress with the editor, did this before. So here you can see if I can push this thing to serve correctly. We've got a streaming error here. But OK, you can see here, this is the Beaker editor. And I've got it actually running entire, entirely in user land with a couple of to-dos left. Um, so I was able to pull it off before with the editor. So now let's give it a shot with the, the Files Explorer. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, create a directory for it outside of Beaker because uh, on the project of this size, um, and especially with something like this where I'm going to want to use a Git repo, I actually want to have the source code live outside of Beaker and then sync into a hyperdrive. So I'm going to make a directory, uh, Beaker dash Files Explorer. And this spell bad, so let's try that again. All right. And I'm going to create a new drive then. Your files, explore, explore, well, I'll give it a view um, and navigate hyperdrive files. And rather than just clicking create, I'm going to click from folder. And this takes me into this OS folder selector. I'm just going to jump over to Baker Files Explorer, click use that folder, and create. It's going to go ahead and show us the sync modal, but there's nothing more to be done because there are no files in there yet. So I'm just going to hit close. And now we have our Files Explorer. All right, step one complete. Step two, I'm going to open up my editor here. Close out all the work I was doing before. And I'm going to find the source code for the Files Explorer, which is here. And I'm just going to copy all of this out and into the new project directory. So here's this uh, folder structure. Let's create a new Explorer window, a new Finder window, rather. And just copy all this over. OK, so far so good. So now let's go back to our folder sync. And uh, so whenever you've set a local folder, and by default it doesn't auto sync, it just you know sets what the folder should be if you want to sync. And then anytime you want to uh, pull files from the file system into the hyperdrive, you click the button again, and it'll show you what'll change. And you can explore through these files to see what's going to happen. These are all green, meaning that they're going to be additions. Uh, let's see if there's anything here that we might not want. Build.sh. What does build.sh do? Well, let's go ahead and add the folder to my workspace here so I can start working on it inside of VS Code. OK, build.sh. That looks like old code. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. No need to put it into my hyperdrive. We're not going to use it. we got a package.json, also looks old. So I'm going to remove that. I'm going to serve that JSON, same story, don't need that. And I think that's going to cover it. And we may be in luck. This project may actually be pretty ready to go. So I've changed what's going, uh, I've, ch I've changed the source folder, but the folder sync UI doesn't automatically refresh. But I can click this little button right here, this little refresh button to ch check again. And now you can see the things that I removed and then taken out. I don't see any DS stores or any nonsense like that, so no need to worry about that. So why don't we go ahead and press the sync button and see what happens. Okay, so that's done. And okay, so far so good. 
the reason the file explorer happens to be in a good place for us is that it was originally built entirely in, in, in user land, but as an HTTPS application. There was an earlier version of Beaker where it was an HTTPS application. Even whenever you clicked here, it was actually loading it in an iframe. So let's click open drive. And uh, I'll pull Paul crazy real quick. Okay, now the redirect didn't do any favors for us. So that's going to have to change, or either we're going to have to get a dot UI involved. Why don't we change, let's make this one of the first things we change. So the reason that we just got that 404 is that the um, uh, application is designed to take as the path the key of the drive that you want to be looking at. And uh, that's actually kind of a problem for us because um, if we do that, by default, Beaker's going to be looking inside of a drive uh, to find a file that matches the path name, and it didn't find one. I'll go back to show that again. Couldn't find a file named long key. And so it's actually prompting us to go ahead, since we own the hyperdrive, to create a file there, an index.markdown or an index.html. Of course, that's not what we want to do, so we're not going to do that. Now, the way you could solve this um, is basically two options. Uh, one of them would be to um, uh, create a front end for the thing. Um, and the front end is something specific that we have built in. Um, or we could change how we do the URL structure. Um, I'll just mention what a front end is. If you go to the documentation, you can find it um, right down. Let's see here. So, show that a little more slowly. New documentation homepage, and if you just go down to front ends. Um, front ends are basically a way to make it so that every response gets handled by um, this file right here, .ui slash ui.html. And um, as a result, you can basically do dynamic page responses using this mechanism. So it's a pretty fun thing to use. But we're not going to use the .ui for this. At least I don't think so. I certainly could. Hmm. Well, that's an interesting thought. You know, why don't we go ahead and do a .ui for this thing? All right, so we'll do a front end. So now we got a starting point. Now I'm gonna, uh, you know, sometimes you can just open up the editor and start working from here, but it's a larger project. I want to use VS Code, so I want to actually have the thing running um, with the auto sync, so that I can work inside of VS Code, and then changes I make will automatically get written to the hyperdrive. So I'm gonna click. Start auto sync there, and so now auto sync is going, and it should be good to go. The thing I'm going to do is turn on live reloading. So now, anytime a change occurs, it'll just refresh for us. Uh, I'll just demonstrate that again because that's a little bit of a hidden away feature. If you click on the menu here, developer, toggle live reloading, and that'll cause the any hyper uh, drive to automatically refresh whenever a change is detected. Okay, so if we want to do a UI.html, the first thing we do is we create a, a .UI folder. And then we create UI.html. Whatever I put here is what's going to get served. So if I just say, hello world, and refresh, well, I don't even need to refresh because auto reload is on, but there you go. Now, every page that you load, is going to respond this way. Now, it's different if you access a, an embedded image or a request a script or something like that. Those won't get interfered with. It's only things that you navigate to using the, uh, you know, the, the browser that'll get uh, rendered this way. It's a nice handy aspect about it. So the simplest thing we should be able to do is just take the code that already exists here and dump it straight in here. And nothing needs to change, so why don't we do that before we start to be a problem. There it goes. Wow, this is a lot easier than I expected. So, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> there's the application. That blue screen flash is something pretty ugly that we're not going to worry about right now. It's an existing bit of ugliness we have to solve. And so it looks like a lot of the basic functions are all working correctly here. So that's a great sign. And like I said, I'm not super surprised by this because the uh, yeah the um, 
code for this was originally entirely in user land. And so I know there's a couple of things that'll break. The import won't work because that actually depends on an API that's privileged and I need to find to actually expose that inside of uh, uh, user land. So that's not yet available. Okay, so this is looking good. So that pretty much wraps up what we were doing here. This ended up being a little bit easier than I was expecting, just on account of how the code was already structured, didn't have to do a lot of editing. Uh, but we managed to demonstrate the key point that I wanted to get across, which is this idea of um, using Folder Sync. You wanted to be able to uh, work on a project from outside of Beaker. Um, so yeah, you can use that with live reloading and um, auto sync to get a, a pretty nice um, you know, glue between your preferred editor and, uh, and the Beaker environment. So uh, thanks for tuning in and I'll uh, catch you on next time.